10 underrated horror films that should be remade. If we observe the trend in cinema, it becomes pretty clear that remakes are here to stay whether you like it or not. While some remakes fail miserably, we cannot deny that some actually manage to preserve the authenticity and brilliance of the original movie. Horror in particular is such a popular genre that some of the classics from back in the day are ripe for the taking. Maybe it is time to appreciate well-made remakes, and in this movie, we have brought together a collection of some underrated horror flicks that might be fun to watch one more time in a new form. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. In my pants. The Fun House, 1981. A carnival is in town and a teenager, Amy Harper, visits with a few friends. They have a wonderful time at the carnival until they witness a murder by a man who wears a Frankenstein mask. They start to panic and try to leave the fun house, but they realize that all exits have been locked. One of Amy's friends steals the manager's money and the furious owner sends the killer to hunt them down. As they are being stalked, they have to find means of surviving through the night with the maniacal killer on the loose. When we think of remakes, not necessarily is the original flawless. Sometimes the shortcomings are overcome with the remake version of the movie, and for the funhouse, we want something in that capacity. The director of the original film was the talented Toby Hooper, but this film failed to be as creepy as his works in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The plot was exciting, but the bad guys were really not menacing enough. At the same time, the location and ideas are just the perfect content for a spine-chilling horror film. The tension in the narrative and the claustrophobic climax full of exciting moments will provide fodder for an amazing remake. The direction could be handed over to someone like Alexandre Auge, who has done justice to his works like the Maniac remakes and The Hills Have Eyes. It certainly would be exciting to see this potentially great film flourish with a remake. The Howling, 1981. Karen White is a television journalist who helps the police to arrest a serial killer who was stalking her. The near-death experience of the showdown leaves her traumatized and she is advised to head to a psychiatric retreat in a remote mountain resort. However, she soon finds the behavior of the residents of the region to be strange. It doesn't take long for her to figure out that the residents might not actually be what they seem like. This movie ranks among the best werewolf movies ever made and achieved cult status with time. The director, Joe Dante, also made films like Piranha and Gremlins, but this is possibly his best work with the nail-biting suspense in the plot. Some weird characters, creepy music, and the protagonist fighting for her life with vicious werewolves around her are components that come together and make it a classic. This celebrated werewolf movie, however, lacked the budgetary allotment that could have changed the look of it. If a remake were to be made, we would hope for proper studio guidance with sufficient funds to lead the proceedings. The director has to be chosen carefully because it isn't easy to replicate the success of Joe Dante. The successor has to be a visionary who can do justice to the mesmerizing story of the howling, but in the right hands, it would be a treat for horror fans. The Driller Killer, 1979. This movie narrated the horrifying story of a struggling artist who was finding it hard to make ends meet. He had to take care of his female roommates, pay the bills, and his meager earnings weren't enough. Frustration drives him to insanity, and he takes to the streets of New York at night and hunts down homeless people. He picks his victims randomly and uses his drill machine to commit a series of violent murders. Can he be reined in before it's too late? This movie explores the thin line between trashy exploitation films and art house cinema, and the psychodrama had all the ingredients of a cult classic. The director of The Driller Killer, Abel Ferrara, is known for some promising movies in his career. 
and this movie was his first notable work. It captured a man's descent into psychosis and elaborated on an urban paranoia that might be relatable for many. However, we have some complaints that might be evened out with a well-made remake. The original version suffered from the lack of budget that led to shady locations and a mediocre cast. If a remake were to be made, John McNaughton could be handed over the charge of direction and would be the perfect man for the job. We also feel that the story would be more relevant in today's chaotic times. What do you think? Maximum Overdrive, 1986. A passing comet causes a devastating radiation storm on Earth that causes machines to come to life. These machines turn against their creators and humans are threatened with this strange uprising. A group of survivors, including a chef, his boss, and a newlywed couple is trying to fend for themselves. With homicidal trucks and other deadly gadgets and vehicles on the loose, it is going to be no less than a miracle if they manage to survive. This is one of the rare movies where Stephen King tried his hand at direction. This funny and entertaining B-grade action sci-fi movie is appealing for those who wouldn't take it too seriously. The plot throws logic out the window, and you must too if you are to enjoy the narrative. For instance, even though everything from lawnmowers to electric knives to trucks comes to life, the honeymooner's car works just fine. However, the movie doesn't pull back when it comes to the suspense on offer. No character is shown sympathy, not even kids, which is evident from the scene where the steamroller comes randomly and squashes an innocent child. Even with the campy nature of the film, the idea is undoubtedly innovative and could be an interesting remake with some modifications. With the right production house taking over, this might just be the ideal popcorn flick for a fun evening. Two Evil Eyes, 1990. This film is a tribute to the legendary author Edgar Allan Poe, who is loved worldwide for his eerie horror stories. It takes two of his short stories and with prominent horror directors in charge, two marvelous movies are crafted. The first story is about a terminally ill husband who is hypnotized by his wife's lover. When he dies, he gets trapped between the world of the living and the dead, and when he is possessed by evil forces, things get scary. The second story is about a man who tortured a black cat that his girlfriend brought home. He eventually kills his girlfriend, but fate has a nasty surprise for him when the cat returns. The best thing about this movie was that the responsibility was shouldered by two of the most prolific horror film directors, George Romero and Dario Argento. They added a modern twist to the stories, and while both the stories are well directed, there is a glaring budgetary constraint that can be noticed. The gruesome and grisly stories will manage a fan following, even today if the movie is remade. However, there ought to be certain changes, especially to Romero's part which seems like an extended scene made for television. The script isn't the best asset of the movie, and with a potent script writer, things can get even better this time around. But who could be handed over the direction? We believe that Lee Whannell and James Wan, the men behind movies like The Conjuring and Saw, would do a wonderful job if given the opportunity. Tourist Trap, 1979. A group of friends are stranded in the middle of nowhere and take refuge at a secluded roadside museum. The owner decides to help them out with their car trouble, but things aren't as good as they seem. His psychopath brother has telekinetic powers, and he can use it to animate the several mannequins that he uses to keep him company. He starts killing them one by one, and the group has nowhere to run as the mannequins come alive. Tourist Trap is a weird and wonderful thriller that keeps you on your toes for the entire length of the movie. There is an atmosphere of darkness and mystery and the director, David Schmoller, also includes some comic relief through the bizarre turn of events. 
with an impressive musical score and some good acting performances from the likes of Chuck Connors, this movie could potentially scare you as a child. The problem is that as you start looking at the film from a mature perspective, you realize the glaring loopholes in the plot. A remake should take care of the illogical bits. If the campy and silly nature of the film is replaced with a more plausible storyline, the remake could work wonders with the audience. Wolfen, 1981. A cop in New York is assigned to investigate a series of brutal murders. It seems like all of these horrifying deaths have been caused by animal attacks, but there is something strange about the manner of the killings. As the cop gets deeper into the case, he discovers that an ancient Indian legend about wolf spirits might be relevant to the attacks. Can he solve the paranormal mystery and end the killing spree? Wolfen is an eerie and mythical horror thriller that has your attention in a jiffy. Even with the plentiful werewolf stuff all around, this movie stands out as an exceptional work with the perfect atmosphere and tension in the narrative. The creature effects are minimalistic, but manage to have the desired effect on the audience. It was based on the first novel by Whitley Strieber, who scripted a story of a wolf race living in the big city. However, the makers edited out some of the interesting bits from the story and replaced it with environmental jargon and Native American lore. In the modern context, both these aspects can be a clear winner at the box office, and for the remake, it would be a smart idea to replicate the original movie instead of the novel. The remake would flourish at the hands of Native American screenwriter Sherman Alexie, who previously worked in Smoke Signals. Shopping Mall, 1986. A group of shopping mall employees decides to stay back after the mall is closed for a late night party. The problem starts when the robotic security system in the mall malfunctions and three killer droids start to hunt them down. They find out that the mall is locked and they have nowhere to run. Now they must prepare for a battle with the mighty security system that seems to be on a psychotic killing spree. This movie is a typical cheesy 80s flick that has some unreal circumstances blowing into a predictable climax. While it is a great B-movie with plenty of action, the gore quotient isn't half as high as you would expect. Most of the victims die from laser blasts or are electrocuted, and the gruesome deaths are missing. This cult classic could be double the fun with enhanced killbots and more violence. The premise of being stuck in a mall with androids gone crazy is an idea that would sell with the right execution. We have heard several rumors about a remake for this one, but none of them materialized. If and when it does, this should be a treat for those who loved the entertainment on offer for the original movie. The Slumber Party Massacre, 1982. A young high school student decides to have a slumber party when her parents aren't home. She invites a bunch of her friends, but what is supposed to be a fun night soon turns into a nightmarish experience for the lot. A psychotic serial killer wielding a power drill machine is prowling in the neighborhood and manages to make an unannounced entry to the party. As the slumber party turns into a bloodbath, it is up to one of the girls to help them out. It is not often that you get to see a feminist perspective of an apparently cheesy 80s slasher flick. This movie promises to be a fun ride with some suspenseful scenes. The premise where a psycho killer is on the loose is engaging enough and plenty of blood and gore make things pretty interesting. But if we see a remake, we would want things to appeal to the millennial today. Back then, it was directed by Amy Holden Jones, a strong feminist, and we wouldn't want things to change this time around. The direction and script writing could be managed by Jen and Sylvia Soska. The duo proved their skills with some amazing work in the film American Mary. With their fresh and fierce narrative, the Slumber Party Massacre can be twice as fun and also be a sure recipe for success.
Hell Night, 1981. Four young college students want to join the Alpha Sigma Rho fraternity. For this, they have to spend a night in a deserted old mansion where the previous resident murdered his entire family 12 years ago. Some believe that a survivor from that horrifying night still remains in a monstrous form in the mansion. The senior students try to pull a prank on them, but they soon find out that there might be some truth to the rumors, as they are stalked by the monstrous entity. This movie has an effective horror thrill with an amazing performance by Linda Blair, who played one of the four students. There are some iconic moments in the movie that are still fresh in the minds of the fans. However, despite the creative murder scenes, the body count in the film isn't as high as what you would expect from a slasher drama. In case a remake is made, we would like the violence to go up a notch and maybe the inclusion of a few more gruesome murders. The filmmaking has to be in good hands, preferably those who have already mastered a reboot. We can think of no one better than Todd Farmer and Patrick Lussier, the team behind My Bloody Valentine 3D. It would certainly be one hell of a remake that would be lapped up by the horror fans. If you guys enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe, and press that bell icon that will help you get notifications. We upload an awesome video every day. Have an amazing day ahead and stay safe.